Ecosystems. When I talk about a tech ecosystem, I'm referring to the wider range of products and services that surround a particular tech product. We all know that there are several. There is Microsoft's ecosystem, there are Google's, there's Apple's, and uh, there's a few others, Samsung, for example. What I wanna do in this mini series, this is part two of a mini series on how we can integrate desktop Linux. Uh, if you're wanting to run desktop Linux, on an OS on your laptop or desktop at home, but you know you have to integrate at some point and at some level with the ecosystem that's provided by your education institution or by your workplace, what can you do to get around those things and still use the Linux OS that you love while getting along with everybody else at school or work? And today, we're gonna to try and tackle the Google ecosystem. Uh, timestamps will try and be below. If you haven't already liked the video, click subscribe if you're new. Let's get on board and uh, see how we can integrate with the Alphabet company's internet monopoly. All right, so thankfully, integrating with the Google ecosystem of services and applications is a whole lot more straightforward than it is with Microsoft's or Apple's ecosystem. And, uh, and I don't know what the correlation is there, whether it's between the fact that a lot of uh, early Google developers really enjoyed using Linux and open source projects, or whether it's just a, just a happy coincidence. But whatever the case, integrating with your Google account uh, is really straightforward on both GNOME and KDE to some degree as well. Now you'll notice I'm using Zorin OS 16, which is based on the GNOME desktop. So by coming into settings and just adding my Google account to the online accounts dialog, you can see that it adds functionality to mail, calendar, contacts, documents, photos, files, and printers. Now on the GNOME side of things, there are a few more features that the GNOME team have built into their desktop compared to what the last time I used KDE. If you use KDE on the daily and you integrate with a Google account all the time, let me know in the comments below whether the situation has improved beyond mail, calendar, contacts, uh, and putting the Google Drive as a network share. That was kind of my experience the last time I checked, but let me know if it's improved in the comments below. When it comes to the GNOME desktop though, they've actually done a pretty bang up job with making all of these settings available out of the box in most GNOME desktops. Now it is worth mentioning that the uh, email client that you will be using will be Evolution by default, as that's the one that it plugs directly into. And you can see here that I've actually got both my uh, Gmail and also the uh, Microsoft uh, account email, both synced into the same email client here, which is really nice. It is worth also mentioning that the native calendar app will bring in two-way synchronization for your Google account uh, appointments, events, and that kind of thing. So that is really handy. And it is also worth mentioning that the to-do app that is built in to the GNOME desktop, and most distributions will ship this app by default, will also bring in your list of tasks from your Google Tasks account, which is kind of nice. Also, it is worth mentioning the Documents app. That is another default GNOME app that basically just lists in no particular order all of the Google documents that it can find associated with your account. Now, I don't exactly know whether the documents is undergoing active development or if there's any more features planned for it, because it is very bare bones in what it shows you. You can do things like export to PDF or print or preview different Office files in your Google Drive. But if you want full control over what's going on in your Google Drive, then you'll notice that a network share is made available to you once you've logged in to the GNOME desktop and also to the KDE desktop uh, on the file browser. So by entering into this network share, you have the ability to manipulate these files as if it were any other network drive. Now that comes with its own set of pros and cons. On the pro side, network shares are usually fairly reliable and they give decent uh, synchronization, not actual file sync in that none of these files exist locally on your hard drive, but they uh, are fairly snappy to open as long as you're dealing with relatively small files. If you use that particular file a lot and nothing changes, it will cache it, but for the most part, you've got that little hiccup between clicking on the file and opening it. So that's kind of the, the caveat that you have to deal with with network shares. If you are looking for a genuine file synchronization desktop client, then there's two recommendations that I have for you uh, that I think work quite well. The first of which is Overdrive. 
I've used Overdrive or I started using Overdrive uh, years ago in my last few years of university and uh, I found it to be fantastic with uh, synchronizing uh, local files from the Google Drive folder in my Google account to local files on my computer's hard drive and balancing changes between the two. So you'll notice here that the list of features are fairly impressive and good to see. The one that I particularly found uh, helpful was when they would, uh, you could enable a setting that would convert Google Docs, the web-based versions of those documents, to local office or open document standards to edit offline. So what that meant is that rather than opening a particular file uh, in your Google Drive by double clicking it and it bumping you out to the web browser, you would instead be given a local office document file that it would convert on the fly for you. And so you could edit it in LibreOffice or OnlyOffice or your office suite of choice. So the only downside to Overdrive, there's two, is that first of all, while it does support basically every Linux distribution under the sun, you do need to fork out a little bit of cash to make it happen. $7 is definitely not prohibitive, but it is worth mentioning. You do get a free 14 day trial if that's your thing. This is not a sponsored video or anything. It's just worth mentioning. The other option that you do have is by using a third party sync client that does multiple uh, cloud sync uh, alternatives. So for example, like the one that I mentioned in the integrating with Microsoft in sync does a pretty good job at integrating with a bunch of different uh, cloud service providers, including uh, Google Drive and OneDrive, Dropbox, etc. So if there's uh, a multitude of cloud providers that you want to have syncing locally onto your desktop, then definitely check out in sync. Their pricing is a little bit more expensive but it is worth mentioning. Okay, so that deals with file synchronization, email, calendar, tasks, and uh, ooh, it also is worth mentioning that on the GNOME desktop, and correct me if this is not the case on KDE, but you can actually print files from Google Cloud printers that you have set up on your Google account. Okay, so there's a bunch of stuff that already open source desktops can do with Google accounts. The next thing I want to just uh, speak into quickly is uh, two things. First of all, if you're going to spend a lot of time in different Google uh, services, then definitely using the Chromium web browser is my recommendation. You obviously can go and get the full fat Google Chrome version. However, a lot of people when they're trying out Linux for the first time, it's probably because they're looking to have a little bit more ownership over their data and privacy and that kind of thing. And while Google Chrome is a well-engineered browser, uh, it definitely has its fair share of telemetry and privacy concerns. So the Chromium project is a little more transparent and in theory is uh, less invasive in that respect. There are a few forks around the place that really focus on privacy, but in terms of getting a Google experience browser without having to go the whole hog of downloading Google Chrome, Chromium is probably your best bet. This will give you the best experience when it comes to using some of the Chrome web apps, uh, especially offline. And if you wanted to go all out on this concept of just using a Chrome web browser, then definitely go and check out Cloud Ready. Uh, Cloud Ready is a Basically, it's a whole operating system. Very, uh, It's basically based on Chrome OS and it's been bought by Google in the not too distant past. And uh, you can basically go and download and install an x86 build of Chrome, uh, of Chrome OS to use on your desktop. So it's worth mentioning, it's definitely not open source or anything like that. And, uh, and Google has since bought them and is probably gonna do something useful with them eventually. But uh, another recommendation would just be the Vivaldi browser built on the same engine, but it just has a buttload more features in it and uh, it's a really nice browser. So go and check that out if you're bored. Um, but what I do wanna talk about is that if you are gonna be using the Google uh, suite an awful lot, it's worth getting the Google fonts available on your system so that when you're editing your Google Docs uh, in locally uh, installed Office suites like LibreOffice or OnlyOffice, that you actually have access to all of the beautiful fonts that are freely available through the Google Fonts project. So to that end, Font Manager it comes to the rescue. Font Manager is available as a flat pack uh, and it's also available from a PPA and from the AUR and a bunch of other places. But the good thing about Font Manager is it gives you a uh, really simple and straightforward way to bulk install the Google fonts in all of their different configurations on your system. 
Uh, and this definitely helps with the overall look and compatibility of Google Docs showing up on your desktop and you wanting to work with those documents. Okay, the final thing that I do want to mention is uh, integration between your Linux desktop and your Android very googly phone. KDE Connect has been a project that's been around for a long time and if you've made it to this far in the video you probably already know what KDE Connect is all about. But one thing I did want to mention very quickly is that finally after years of waiting uh, and uh, and development and all kinds of restrictions finally with iOS 15 they now have uh, they now have sort of introductory support for iOS in some of their latest builds so I'll if I remember I'll throw a link in the description below you can go and check out where that project is up to with integrating with iPhones but it's uh, definitely looks very promising okay I think that just about covers it this gives us full access to everything that's in our Google account. Uh, it gives us a browser that is both open source, relatively uh, free of telemetry, it gives us easy access to all the Google services that we use, and we get nice integrations and notifications for things like calendars, to-dos, emails, documents, and you can use your cloud printers from your desktop as well. Let me know if you have any other uh, pro tips regarding integrating with the Google desktop. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, yeah, tune in next time. We'll try and tackle the Apple ecosystem. Spoiler alert, it's not going to be pretty, but we'll give it a red hot go anyway. See you guys in the next one.